You begin your journey by simply customizing your character and spawning right on the island. You appear empty-handed with nothing but hunger and thirst bar on your left side corner. Stranded in the middle of nowhere, completely alone, you quickly realize that you are not there by yourself. Although the view might seem charming at first, the world around you is very much a food chain, and you just became a part of it. As you collect resources and build yourself a shelter, your main priority is to keep yourself fed as you're trying to survive another day. Sooner or later you will get to the point where you will harvest everything there is to harvest on that one specific island, and you will have to either expand or relocate completely. The choice will be up to you. Now here is where this survival game in particular stands out from anything else I've ever played. The ocean surrounding you is completely relying on physics. Let me explain. At any given point in the game, whether you're far away from home in the deepest part of the ocean or 5 feet away from your shelter, with the right resources you can control the water physics. You will have to collect empty bottles scattered throughout the island and collect yellow crystals in order for this to work. Once you have all the resources, you will use a workbench to create different potions and tools that will help you throughout your journey. Variety of tools require different resources. Higher quality tools require high quality resources. Pretty simple, right? There is also a customizable skill tree system that is very simple and yet very effective. As you explore and gather material throughout the world, you will gain XP points that can be used towards your personal preference. You can make your character not eat as much and be more reliable when it comes to overall survival. Or you can simply increase your character's endurance and be more proactive if you will. The map is fairly large and breakwaters and transportation is very much a necessity. You can craft different ships based on your personal needs whether you want something fast, reliable, or better yet, something that can fly. Or if you like to trade a lot and you're not a huge sailor, you can always call a merchant and pay him to take you to your destination. I mean, hey, whatever floats your boat. As I mentioned earlier in this video, Breakwaters uses some elements that would classify this as an RPG title. Obviously, we already talked about the skill tree system and different level tools, but one thing you might have not known about this game, and it would be different island designs. For instance, a stereotypical RPG RPG title would offer different biomes and dungeons as you explore, right? Well, in breakwaters, different islands carry different things. For example, one island might have softwood, whereas the other one will have crystals and hardwood. So the game is essentially forcing you to explore and to get outside of your comfort zone. Some islands might require you to be a higher level, which means their enemies will be more powerful and a lot more skilled and probably a lot more difficult to deal with. Higher risk and higher reward type of thing. Now, now, to my understanding, this game is set up exactly the way Valheim is, meaning you are free to explore and go anywhere you want from the very beginning. You are not obligated to unlock certain islands one step at a time, or any of that. Once you start the game, you can technically go to the hardest area in the game and you are completely fine. Nobody's technically holding your hand and that's the most important thing, especially when it comes to survival games. Sure, there is quests and missions you can do in order to get to know the story, but you don't have to do them right away if you don't want to, and I really like that. And let's address the biggest elephant in the room. Why is the game currently sitting in mixed reviews? And based on what I've gathered and read, many players were left disappointed solely for one reason and one reason only. It's multiplayer. Initially, when the game first came out, it promised multiplayer to be a part of the game, something that just existed. And obviously, for a game like this, multiplayer is a must. Can you imagine playing Valheim without multiplayer? I mean, you can, but it's just not the same. Well, originally, the game did have a multiplayer mode available, but unfortunately, it performed very poorly to the point where the developer himself had to completely get rid of it, leaving many players disappointed, especially because that was a feature that most players were, you know, mostly excited about. Very unpopular opinion, but I was going into this game with the mindset of a solo player. When I bought Breakwaters on Steam, Steam did not mention anything about multiplayer being available, so I kind of already knew what I was signing up for, which is a single player. And I enjoy every last minute of it, for sure. I truly did. Now, had I known this prior before buying this game that it was offering multiplayer, and then after purchasing it for that sole reason, and seeing it being completely removed from the game, I would probably have a different 
different opinion about this game right now for sure and that's where the majority of the negative reviews are coming from so i definitely understand where frustration is building up let's talk about the performance of breakwaters when you launch the game it plays very smoothly controls are very responsive and you can tell a lot of work went into it the graphics are very pleasing the textures reminded me a lot of sea of thieves for some reason and i very very respect that in my opinion this type of art style just looks really pleasing to the eye now i noticed a major frame drop especially when i started building bigger houses now understandably i can only assume that this is happening because not only did the game had to focus on what i was doing but it still had to focus on rendering in the water that was constantly floating in changing forms right around me which also made sense why multiplayer wasn't doing that well if i was personal experiencing drastic frame drops and i was by myself i can only imagine how terribly the server would perform with even two players in the world optimization is very much needed for breakwaters especially before it hits 1.0 respectfully the game certainly needs some work there should be no reason why i should lower my settings to low and still experience occasional frame drops when i first started playing break waters i was fine running my settings on high with 60 fps but once i started building more and more in order to keep up with my frames i really had to sacrifice my settings my computer can only do so much when the game is poorly optimized that's pretty much the bottom line now overall i think this is a really really good game i must give the credit where the credit is due and there's a lot of it it is currently being worked on by a solo developer who would occasionally hire part-time contractors here and there but overall the game is unlikely and anything I've ever seen before. And that's what makes me really appreciate this game for what it is. The game is currently aimed to be done by this summer. It is currently three quarters of the way done, which makes me believe and think that we might get some serious updates here soon, including multiplayer maybe. And we're also going to get this on console. It's been confirmed. So that's a plus. If you're a lone wolf when it comes to playing video games and you don't necessarily need somebody to play with, this game will definitely captivate you and will keep you busy for a little while. There is already plenty of content here to invest your time in now if you like multiplayer games i suggest that you just wait until the multiplayer comes out if you love valheim you will for sure like breakwaters i promise you that the concept and the similarities is insane it just taking different place you already know the drill if this video helps you in any way shape or form leaving a like will go a long way or dislike the video if you didn't like it i might have made this video a little too long if you enjoy survival games as much as I do, just think about subscribing to my channel. I talk about survival games pretty much every single week. And with that being said, this was your boy Roos, and I'm out. Goodbye.